The Christian in Complete Armor by William Grinnell. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, with all prayer and supplication. Chapter 61, A Reproof to the Ungrateful World. We shall conclude this head with a double application. First, how few, alas, can we find so ingenious as to praise the great Lord of this world's manner for all the mercies they hold of him. Some are such brutes that, like swine, their nose is nailed to the trough in which they feed. They have not the use of their understanding selfhood. You would count it a sad spectacle to behold a man in a literature with his reason so blasted by his disease, that he knows not his friends, and takes no notice of those that daily bring his food. How many such senseless wretches are lying upon God's hands? Divine Providence ministers daily supplies to their necessities, but they take no notice of his care and goodness. Others there are that sacrilegiously set the crown of praise in their own head, which is due alone to God. Thus Nebuchadnezzar writes his own name upon his palace and leaves God out. Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Daniel chapter 4 verse 30 Proud wretch! Was not every stone he used and that pile cut out of God's quarry? And did he not come upon God's ground for every morsel of sand? Thus the atheistical husbandman gives his plow and dung cart more thanks than the God of heaven who crowns the year with his goodness. The proud soldier stands upon his sword, daring to take the honor of his victory to himself and not ascribe it to the Lord of hosts, who at pleasure gives and takes away the heart from the mighty. Yea, some rather than God should have it, will give it to any other. Thus Pope Adrian, in his blasphemous inscription on the gates of a college he built, abused God with scripture language. Euthrich planted me, Lovain watered me, and Caesar gave the increase which made one writer under N-I-H-I-L-H-I-C, capital D-E-U-S, F-E-C-I-T. It seems God did nothing for this man. Not that I think it unlawful to acknowledge our benefactors as instruments in God's hands for our good, but to blot out the name of God, our chief founder, and omit the name of a creature is a high piece of wickedness. I like that form which a good man used to his friend for kindness. I bless for God for you. I thank God and you. He that will exact more requires what we owe him not. Some, instead of returning thanks to God for his mercies, abuse them to his dishonor. It is not more sad than true that the goodness of God with many serves but to feed their lust. They eat and drink at God's cost and then rise up to play. No weapons will serve them to use but the mercies he hath given them. It is very bad if the tenant pays not his easy rent, but to destroy the trees on his landlord grounds is more intolerable. Yet... Such outrages are daily practiced with the mercies of God. Michael Balbus is infamous for his horrid ingratitude, who, the same night that the emperor had pardoned and released him, barbarously slew his savior, and do not many whom God lets out of the prison of affliction lift up their treacherous knife at God, wounding his name with their their oaths and drunkenness? Others who would be thought thankful, yet all the return they make is but windy praise. They honor him with their lips and pour contempt upon him in their lives. 
Oh, it grates on God's ears when Jacob's voice is attended with Esau's rough hands. When I consider how the goodness of God is abused by the greatness, greatest part of mankind, I cannot but be of his mind that said, The greatest miracle in the world is God's patience and bounty to an ungrateful world. If a prince had an enemy got into one of his towns, he does not send them provision, but lays close siege to the place, and doth what he can to starve them. But the great God that could in a moment destroy all his enemies, bears with them, and is at daily cost to maintain them. Well, may he command us to bless them that curse us, who himself does good to the evil and unthankful. But think not, sinners, that you shall escape thus. God's mill grows slow, but grinds small. The more admirable his patience and bounty now is, the more dreadful and insupportable will that fury be, which arises out of his abused goodness. There is nothing smoother than the sea, yet when stirred into a tempest, nothing rages more. There is nothing so sweet as the patience and goodness of God, and nothing so terrible as his wrath when it takes fire. Be therefore in the fear of God, stirred up to bethink yourselves what to do. It is the trick, they say, of insane persons to spite their dearest friends most, but what madness is it in thee to fly in the face of God with thy sins, who hath done more for thee, than all thy friends, and can do more against thee than all thy enemies. But the more to move thee, first, consider that God keeps an exact account of all his mercies. You cannot steal God's custom. He that could tell the prophet where his servant Gehazi had been, and what he had received of Naaman, will one day tell thee to a farthing every talent thou hast received of him. God not only keeps an account of thy sins, but of the mercies thou hast received, and thou must be answerable for both. Secondly, consider how severely he hath dealt with those that never had so much mercy from him as thyself. If heathens are speechless in judgment, when God reckons with them for their mercies, O oh, how confounded wilt thou be! that goeth from gospel dispensation to hold up thy hand at the bar before the judge of all the world. They are, are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Romans one twenty and 21. If the heathen that was not thankful for his penny cannot lift up his hand in the day of the Lord, where wilt thou appear that hast so many hundred talents in thy hand, to answer for. But thou askest, how thou art to praise God for his mercies? Thou hast but one way to pay God, and it is a strange one, even by running deeper into his debt. What I mean is, that God who hath given thee life and being, who hath exercised unspeakable patience towards thee in his daily providency, and hath preserved and maintained thee, although he has been most wretchedly abused by thee, and for it thy life has become forfeited to his justice. He does yet exhibit a greater mercy, even the Lord Jesus, whom, if thou wilt, with shame and sorrow for thy past sins, come unto and accept as thy Lord and Savior, then wilt thou be in a posture to give God praise for his other mercies. He that rejects this can never be thankful for any. It is Christ alone can give thee a spirit of thankfulness. There, if not a Christless person in the world, but is unthankful. Oh, what a blessed gospel is this, that teaches us here to pay debts by running deeper into the score, to be thankful for less mercies by accepting that which is infinitely greater. End of chapter 61